from happiest minds uh, let's now focus on the mutual fund data that we just got and the big numbers that uh, we should focus on as well net equity inflows they have uh, declined on a month on month basis to 7505 crore rupees there's a big inflow in hybrid funds and this category has been gaining some traction after the debt mutual fund um, uh, taxation changes as well and this time around it's 12421 crores that's the inflow that we are seeing this time and liquid funds as well it's a big jump almost double uh, it's actually an inflow versus outflow Uh, 51,938 crore rupees, which compares with an outflow of 28,545 crore rupees. Also, looking at the small cap space, because it did see record high levels in uh, the month of June, that has come down a bit. So, small cap funds are still seeing inflows of around 4,171 crore rupees, but it has dropped and has come back to the average, actually better than the average in last couple of months as well. And mid caps too, they have seen an inflow at 1623 crore rupees, but that compares with 1749 crore rupees in terms of inflows. Of course, a lot of numbers that we'll be speaking about. Uh, but let's get in Swaroop Mohanty, Chief Executive Officer, Mirai Asset Man Investment Managers, to detail these numbers and tell us what does he think about the flows in the mutual fund industry in the month of July. Swaroop, thank you for joining us. Uh, well, net equity inflows they have declined on a month-on-month basis, and there's a big rush to hybrid funds and liquid funds as well. What do you make of that? I think thank you so much for having me on your show. First of all, I think these are typical numbers that you see when markets have. at a high and and people have this debate on where to invest and you will always see that moving towards hybrid whenever uh, there's such a an opportunity so i'm not very surprised to see the hybrid uh, flows now as you rightly said some amount of it could be in the savings fund which which is like the equity savings fund which could be you know a shift from the debt side i'm not a big proponent of that because you don't move investments on taxation you move investments on your risk profile uh but that that's how the market plays out uh I'm not very surprised by the mid and small flow because that's what is happening in the last 6 8 months there's a fair amount of return chasing and especially the last one year performance standing out for these two categories uh, uh good to see some mid cap flows at least but otherwise if you see last month flows they were totally skewed towards the small cap so so that's where it stands while the large cap of the flex cap also stands uh, good on returns but i believe the return chasing of the last one year is playing out in these figures as we speak the the liquid fund is a factor of institutional money coming back and and uh, good to see that if you see the money market funds also they would have gained traction is is uh, my my opinion uh, but at the end of the day you will see the sip flows continuing so that's where is the biggest uh, uh, upside for the industry because the sip in, in investors continue to remain participative in the market all through the ups and downs and that's where i think the for, forward looking wealth creation will happen rather than market timing on past one year return mm mm-hmm. i uh, just want to understand uh, swarup hi reema here so the total equity inflow is approximately 7500 crore I understand 6,700 crore of that has come in from NFOs. So, if you strip that out, uh, the equity inflow would be close to about 700, close to 800 crores. You know, for the sake of simplicity, the same comparable number of the last quarter, which is your total equity inflows of 8,200 crore uh, minus the NFOs of 3,300 crore, would give you a figure of four and a half thousand crore. So. you know does this really matter to look at the numbers total equity inflows minus the nfos that means people are not putting in you know maybe in the sips or they withdrawn a lot more you see everyone anyway, i'm talking about pure investor play in this you know the investor typically tends to give money to nfos when the markets are completely out and more than that you know when they are in a doubt for investment so uh, this is a typical behavior of investors and i'm not surprised to see that uh, figure but fact is inflow into the industry is inflow into the industry it should not matter whether it's nfo or non nfo is the way i look at it because the investor is picking up equity as an asset class from from an investment perspective but yes uh, what you say is correct at such moments you know the nfos come into play and the industry we are also running an nfo to be very honest and making a disclaimer <laughs> here <laughs> but but uh, that that's the in- investor behavior at this moment you know uh, moving away from core a large flexi cap categories to return chasing on mid and small and yes the nfos with good ideation are are back in the fray you know that mm-hmm. that's how it is and some of the large a uh, new N- uh, funds came out with their nfos so that that would have benefited you would see that continuing in this month also okay. that that's how it will play out for this month also
Okay. So, Arup, while you were talking about the debt scheme, there's an inflow of 61,440 crore rupees, which compares with uh, 14,136 crore rupees in the month of June. Uh, what is this category looking like? The June end is a quarter end, so so we see the institutions going out and they come back this month. So so that's a month end phenomena which had gone out. That money just coming back into the play this month. So the industry would always benefit in the in these such months. But when when it's a quarter end, typically money goes out into the balance sheets. Okay, so par for the course is what the July data looks like. So Arup, thank you so much for joining us today with your insights. Of course, we are awaiting the SIP number as well uh, because that will also give a sense of how much retail investors are really putting in as well. Uh, important flash flashes at the bottom of your screen, and that's coming in from WeWork India because there have been uh, there have been reports about uh, going concern concerns on WeWork globally that uh, there could be some cash flows issues, and uh, uh, there was uh, there were concerns around accounting. And and uh, the going concern behavior of the company as well. Now, WeWork uh, India has written to CNBC TV 18. They have responded. They said any development globally has no impact on our business here. WeWork India is backed by Embassy Group, who holds the majority stake. And Embassy Group controls and operates WeWork Global's business in India. And uh, they ended FY23 revenues with 1400 crore rupees and 250 crore rupees in terms of profit. So they are trying to say basically whatever going concern issues that the global entity had will not impact the India business because Embassy Group is the one that controls the business here. Rima. Okay, let's uh, get into a short break on that note. We'll come back with more on the market. Stay tuned.